To uh, put together the backing piece for the wheel cylinders, um, we need to uh, make sure that we get everything in there. We've got a spacer with a cutout. This cutout fits onto that part there, stops some of the movement. So we're going to put this through here first. Then we're going to offer up the wheel cylinder to the plate. And we're going to rotate the spacer. You see there that I've now made the hole line up. We take our special shouldered bolts. We offer that through. I'm going to turn that over and show you what that looks like. You've got your spacer and you've got your shouldered bolt. Put the nut on there to hold it. We've got a 5 16 bolt that goes in through the back. Got some shake proof washers again. Put our nut on there. So you can see that there. So we'll do the same on the other side. So we're going to tighten that up now. But just before we do that, these are the uh, pins for the brake shoes. These are the pins that the self adjusters go on to, and these do serve two purposes. You can adjust these in and out of this plate. And what that does is it keeps the uh, brake shoe parallel to the drum. By, by pushing on this, the, the shoe can rotate like that, which keeps the lining flat to the drum. And we'll, we'll go over that a bit later on. You can see on this one I've got the lock nut on already. The lock, the lock nut goes in, and that, of course, is how you make them tight so they don't move. Like so. Well, we will adjust those. We need to adjust those, but we'll uh, leave that in for now. Okay, so we're ready to uh, go on to assemble the rest of it. So I've tightened up this cylinder, and I'm just going to tighten this one up. Like so. And the 5 sixteenths. that's tight. We're now ready to uh, fit the backing plate to the uh, wheel cylinder plate. Okay. When you offer the wheel cylinder adapter plate to the backing plate, you may have difficulty lining up these holes for the screws. What causes this are these bolt heads on there. If they're not in line around, they will cause it to be pushed off one way or the other. So you may very well need to loosen off these two bolts, turn them around until they follow the circle, as it were, and you can see that, that those holes now line up and we're ready to put the screws in. Of course, we have to tighten this up because we can't get the wrench back in there. And we'll take a second and we'll just nip those up. You can see now the holes are all lined up and we can uh, put the screws through and the grease catcher on. So we're gonna turn this over. We're just gonna nip the bolts up without allowing the heads to turn. We'll keep our eye on that. making sure that head stays in line with that circle, the imaginary circle. At this stage, we're going to put the pull back springs for the front shoes in like so. You can't put the springs in after the fact, so you must do it 
at this stage before you screw the plate to the backing plate because once that's on there you cannot get the springs in or out so it's important to do that. Okay, we'll put our gasket on, you've got to be sure you get it right because um, the holes will not line up at every point. The uh, cutouts give you a guide, there's a couple of cutouts there, but it can still go on, it can only go on one way and it, it's somewhat mastered, so you've got to make sure you get that lined up. The same with the uh, grease catcher, the grease catcher has multi holes, you've got to make sure you line that up. Then we can start putting the screws in. Wiggle it around. I tend to do a bit of a pattern, a crisscross pattern. It's let it float around till you get them all started. Once you've got them all in, I'm going to turn it over. Now you can see the back side of the wheel cylinder. And we're going to put the screws in. We can tighten these ones up because everything's now aligned. We nip those up. And then we're going to turn it over and tighten up the uh, these nuts. When you've got them all tightened, we'll just whip round them, make sure we caught them all. We're ready to uh, put new rubbers into the wheel cylinders. We're going to put new rubbers in them. We're going to uh, drop the expander in first and take our rubber cup, take a little bit of rubber grease just around the edge to give us some lubrication, makes it slide in nice and easily. To push the lip down. I'm going to take our piston, push that in. The spring's pretty good, <clears throat> but once you get this cap on, everything should stay together. Just watch the lip, make sure it's down inside behind the lug there. Now we're going to do the other side. And there, that's the... Uh, two wheel cylinders built. We're now going to go to the back. We're going to put the pipes on. We remember we took the pipes out. We put that in. I'm going to have to bend the pipe down to show you how to do that. So I'm going to take it and nip it up. Like so, and then I'm just going to ease it there. This is, this is the point that we bent it at, so we're going to push it down. And then the hose will pick up there. So we have to make a decision at this point whether we put the thing in there or in there. But there is no decision because the uh, bleed nipple always wants to be to the top. The air is going to float to the top in the cylinder so we know that that's going to be our bleed nipple hole. So we're going to put that in the bottom. So we're ready to put our nipples in. So we're going to get our balls. We're just going to drop the ball into the hole, like so. You can see that that went and sat in the bottom of the taper. And we're going to put the, the nipple in. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to nip them up because once we put fluid into them, the fluid could come and start to drip down. So we just nip them. We'll have to undo them to bleed them anyway. We're going to put the hoses on the backing plate to make it easy for you to see. 
Uh, we're going to put the hose through the bracket and a flat washer and we use a half nut. I'm going to wind that on to the hose. <coughs> I'm not going to tighten this lock nut up at all. I'm going to offer it, wind it in until I can get this fitting to start on, on the hose. You can see I've got plenty of movement there which gives me a good it allows me to angle it to the right angle to make it <coughs> join onto the hose. The last thing you need to do is to cross thread the fitting to the hose. So that does that. It also allows you to wind it up with your fingers because the, uh, you're not pulling it against one another. We'll do the same with this one. And that's the easiest way to do that. <coughs> then tighten the lock nut for the hose and then I can tighten the pipe fitting and uh, that makes it ready to put onto the car. You're going to find these things are really rusted up and you may very well have to use some penetrating oil or some heat but you're going to have to make that decision on each job as you do them. So we're going to take these studs out of here the nuts and the studs are all coming together so before we can send these out we'd have to strip them all apart this is the expander for the handbrake and for the initial press with the foot what happens as I explained earlier is this pulls out of here which pushes the shoes up against the drum for the initial press and how they do this, I'll show you in a moment. What happens is the movement of these rollers and these sliders cause the expanders to slide up. And that's what gives you the push, and that's also what gives you your brake feel. That's the only feel with this braking system that you have, is this expander pushing the drums against the, or the shoes, I should say, against the drums. So we're going to get that all cleaned up and caddied. So I'm going to push this out to show you what's inside. There's a cup, and there's an expander. You can see that expander is broken, so we'll need to replace that and then another rubber cup. You can see the condition of the cup is pretty poor and also the wall inside the cylinder is very rusty and of course that needs re-sleeving also. In the rear wheel cylinder to the a new sleeved one we're going to have to put studs into it. To do this we're going to use a couple of nuts you can, you can use a stud removing tool if you have one, but if you don't have one, the best way to get the nuts out or in, or the studs in or out, is to use a couple of nuts. I'm going to put two on there. I'm going to take two wrenches. We're going to lock the two nuts together, like so. That's squeeze them onto the thread at that end and then we're just going to wind them like so. We hold the bottom nut then we can uh, take that off and we'll do all four the same, we'll just go right the way through Take your two nuts off. Now the cylinder's got the studs in it. And we're going to as assemble the expander device. The uh, plate goes on like so. This is uh, how the expander works. The pull on the rod sends the two pieces which push the shoe against the drum. See how free that is, how that works. What we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of anti seize grease in there.
this get, can get full of water, so you want to put plenty of grease around so that it doesn't seize up. Lay that in there like so. You have to hold it like that. And pick that up like so. So now <coughs> we're ready to uh, put in our spacers. Slide them down inside. You can see that the holes are somewhat bigger than the spacers. This allows everything to move around. You can see that movement there. And what that does is it allows the shoes to centralize inside the drum. Nothing is forced into a position that it doesn't want to go into. You can see that that movement there allows the shoes all to centralize, which is the principle of the compensator rod and everything inside the uh, drum. So we're going to put a washer on there. You can see that that washer's got a small bevel on one side and the bevel wants to be up. And then we're going to put a couple of uh, internal tooth locking washers. These are go on there. They give you a lock without uh, any uh, fullness. A spring washer is too full so it keeps the uh, height down. We'll tighten these up and you'll see, you'll see that because of the spaces in there, this can still float. We call fully floating. The cadmium, of course, is going to stop the rust and the grease is going to keep it lubricated. And so, you can see that that's ready to go, this part's ready to go on. So we're now ready to put the hydraulic part into the wheel cylinder, the rubber cups and the expander and the piston. The first thing I do is I take a bit of rubber grease, this comes with the hydraulic parts, the uh, kits, the rubber parts, spread a bit around there and I just slip it into the end and I push it all the way in. And we're going to put the expander in next. We drop that in like so. We take our other cup. Have to put that in the opposite way around. You've got the indent. And then we're going to stick that in like so. You can just push it down a bit with the piston. So now We've got the cup there and the cup there. So we need to spread the covers, the dust covers, over the piston. And we're going to do that just like so. We're going to pop that in. We're going to push that over the lip there. Do the same on this one. Put a bit of lubrication, this rubber grease. Only use rubber grease, don't use any other type of grease because it'll affect the neoprene cups. Spread that like so. And then that's the uh, wheel cylinder ready to go onto the backing plate on the car. To take note of on these brake shoes before we take them apart, the way this is set up, this was on the left rear, and the way this is set up is they have a short lining on this side shoe and a short lining on there. The direction of rotation on this shoe is around this way. How they should be set up is the short lining should be here and here. The lining is, does not go to the end of the shoe. This is the short end, as I call it, there. It should be the short end of the lining should be there, so the lining would stop at this point there, be short as it is there, and long there. At this point, we're going to take the linkage off the shoes and the self-adjuster off the shoes. I am going to put 
ca freshly carried shoes on here with new lining. So all I'm doing is taking the linkage off to keep it for another day. So I'm going to take it off this shoe at this point and this shoe at that point and let's leave it together. We'll put it in the uh, glass beater or clean it up. We'll degrease it first, put it in the glass beater and then send it off for CAD. Cadmium's not just to make it look pretty, of course. It keeps the rust away and stops it deteriorating. So it's a, it's a good uh, way of re assuring the, the uh, proper function because the seizure doesn't occur. Take a punch and a hammer. Tap them out. So you can see the pins are somewhat corroded. So we're very tight in there. And again, like the front ones, we roll it to take the spring out. There's the linkage. Now we're going to take the self-adjuster off. I'm going to hold this piece in the vise and undo this nut. I'm going to bang the piece out here. You can see that that's rusty and uh, by CAD plating everything that'll give that a good surface. This is never lubricated because this works on a friction as this, as the two washers grip the shoe and the shoe wears it goes out and holds it there so that the cylinder isn't pushed back each time and the travel is increased so the piston pushes the shoe out as it wears this slides up like so and that's how the self-adjuster works. Have to be particularly careful with the spring because this is a high heat area and these springs shrink. You can see that that spring looks somewhat closed up, almost spring bound. So I'll show you a new one when we put it together and you'll probably see it's considerably longer and we'll change those springs. We're going to do the same with the front shoes. see that was considerably easier because it wasn't rusty and that shoe is the same idea the washer grips as the pressure from the wheel cylinder pushes the shoe closer to the drum the uh, thing slides grips and that saves travel each time so that's a self adjuster we can now take these off take the split pin out of those because we are changing the shoes because these are bonded, we'll need to take these off, clean them up, and get them CAD plated and ready to go. But one of the things you'll need to do is to be particularly careful when you're taking your shoes off that there's no cracks here. Quite often, these shoes crack here, and they lose their strength, so then they tend to bow out. So if the crack is there, I'm afraid you need new shoes. Shoes are in good shape, and you're just going to replace the linings. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to take the linings off the shoes. I'm just drilling the heads of the rivets off. I'm not going into the steel at all. I'm just making the rivet thin enough that I can bang them off. I'll take it to the vise, give me some support. Put a pin punch in the middle. Tap it through. When you've got all the rivets out, you can part the 
lining in the shoe and uh, you can, the shoe is now ready to fit a new lining to. Fitting the brake linings to the rear shoes, it's important to put them on in the right position. The shoes are not standard one way. As we discussed when we were stripping everything apart, the leading edge of the shoe has the short side and the trailing edge has the long side of the lining. So this part, uh, this one would be a left rear setup. So you would have a short with a long to the adjuster and then a short end to the adjuster and a long one to the master cylinder. So it's essential that we do two this way and two that way to have a set for the rear shoes of the car. You see the, the shoes come in such a way that they're pre-drilled for both setups. So it's important that you have in your mind set the shoes for the correct position of the lining. We're going to mount this lining to the shoe and to do that we're going to align the holes and put some rivets through. Some of the uh, linings take a little bit of tweaking and pulling around. So it's important to make sure the person who drilled the shoe actually did it, that the lining will go on. So we're going to put all the rivets in and then we're going to start to rivet them over. You can do this quite easily at home, you don't need any special equipment to do it, except it is a good idea to have a rivet set. Rivet set makes a nice round top to the rivet and, and makes it very tight. So you put all the rivets in, give it a bit of a wiggle, push the rivets home. So now we, we're confident that the drilling of that lining and shoe are correct. You can see perhaps down there that there's a slight gap. So now we need to make sure that there is no gap because the heat transfers from the lining into the shoe and then away through the axle. So we're going to take a couple of vice grips and that way. We have to tip it over, the lining and the shoe arrangement, and put it on a pin punch in the vice and then hit it. Well, all the, all the rivets will probably fall out except the ones that you're working on, but that doesn't matter because you've achieved the line-up of the, the shoe to the, or the lining to the shoe. I should say. And you can see that that rivet is nicely over. We have no gap at all between the shoe and the lining. And we'll continue on and we'll knock over all of the rivets until that shoe is completely attached to the lining. You'll notice that I've done them all now. All the rivets are riveted over. As I was moving the, from one rivet to the other, I uh, moved the vice grips along to keep the lining good and tight against the shoe. There's no, there's no gap at all between the, sh the lining and the shoe. And that uh, lining is now ready to uh, be put on the car. We'll continue on and do the other shoe for this side and the shoes for the other side and that's how you do all of the shoes. With the shoe before we put it on the car is we're going to put the 